Hello, this is going to be part two of the Bezier tutorial series I'm doing in Unreal using blueprints in code. Um, this is going to be showing the example for having four points instead of three. Uh, our previous one was three points and link in the description, I guess, to the playlist. Um, yeah, so it's basically going to follow along this curve, have these points and everything. I hit play and it follows along them. It's very nice. Uh, we're going to go into our example map. So I'm going to first duplicate uh, this class, the simple Bezier curve class that I made in the first video or in the first part. Uh, just so it gets a lot of like setup out of the way that I don't have to do. I'm going to duplicate it. BP underscore quad Bezier is what I'm going to call it. I'm going to open that up. And we're gonna we're going to delete uh, get location and rotation bezier. I'm going to change control anchor to start um, anchor, and we're gonna add another vector. So it's gonna be called end anchor, and this is gonna be vector. Move this up. And we're going to make it instance editable and show it as a 3D widget. OK. And then we're going to drag this over. I'm disconnect it, actually. And duplicate this. Plug in our end anchor. OK. And disconnect this. And so we have our start anchor. anchor. I'm going to change the x on the start anchor to 250 and this one's going to be 750 just so we have it sort of square-ish and drag this in just so we have it all placed up because really it's the same sort of concept um, let me see are we using get rotate get location anywhere else yep in the get rotation yeah so get location bezier it's going to be the same sort of concept where we just add in where instead of just using three points like so we're going to use uh instead of just using three vectors we're going to use four vectors so we're going to add another move this up and we're going to do um let's do anchor end do vector and anchor start okay and it's going to be the same sort of concepts um, but I'm going to I'm going to show you the visual representation first so I'm going to clean out this function so that way it doesn't do anything and then what we're going to do is show you this all right so let me drag this in so we can see it let me, yeah, this is off, so we don't have that running. Whoops. Right, so why is ending? Oh, yeah, because I didn't change its Z, so it's going to be 500. There we go. So uh, let me get this in the right angle so I can have plenty of room to show you. All right, so in this case, uh, the square is going to be P0. Start anchor is going to be P1, end anchor is going to be P2, and end is going to be P3. All right, we're still doing the thing of lerping between each one, but we're just doing more lerps. That's really all we're doing is first we're lerping uh, between the points, then we're lerping between all of the green lines, and then that gives us a blue line or blue dots. So now we have to lerp between those ones again. It's basically another layer of lerping with more points as well. And I think this is the best example of how to visually show it because it's basically the same as this, but with more points and that's it. And just adding another layer to handle that extra point. So we're going to go into here, go back to get location. Because the draw curve can actually work the same way. So if I go back into drawing curve for seconds. I'm going to add our end anchor here. 
so that way it's plugged in. Because all we're doing is updating it, it's slight modifications on the same exact kind of code. So if I go back to the event graph, uh, get location, start point, anchor start, anchor end, end point, and time. And we'll plug that into our line end and our new location. Plug that in. It won't be doing anything <laughs> yet. So now what we're going to do, it's a little bit more messy, honestly, but it's basically the same sort of concept. So I'm going to do a sequence. Instead, I'm going to have three pins on here. The last one's going to be for the return value. And we still have temp A and temp B, so we can reuse that. So temp A, we're going to set that, drag out, lerp, plug in alpha. Start point is going to be A, and B is going to be anchor start. Just as our visual representation says, where P0 is start, uh, P1 is anchor start. Now we're going to do um, P1 to P2, which is anchor start to anchor end. And we can reuse temp B for this one. So, lerp, anchor start to anchor end, alpha, plug that into that. Drag this up. Another lerp. This one's going to be from A. A is going to be, in this case, we now are doing P2 to P3. So that's going to be from anchor end to end point. Plug in alpha, and we don't have the variables, so temp promote to local variable, and we're going to name it temp c. Now let's plug these in. It's a little bit messy, but it's really the only cleanest way to do it uh, that I can see in Blueprint. Um, next, now that we have our green points, these are our green dots on, from the diagram pretty much, is temp a, b, and c is... Uh, this one, this one, and this one. Sorry, I can't pause the GIF or GIF. Now we're going to alert between those ones. So compile, save. So we're going to do another alert. And we're going to plug in alpha. And we're going to plug in A to B. Just as we did before in our simple Bezier version where A to B was the return value, we're getting another one, so that's not going to be a return value. So another lerp, and this one is going to be B to C, and then plug in time. So you may be asking, well, what about why does it have to be repeating for B? Well, B is connected to both of them, as you can see. I wish I could pause it, but it's, uh, A is connected to B, and B is connected to C. Those are those green lines, or green dots. So, what we're doing with these LERP now is uh, making these blue dots. So, we're gonna make that. Uh, promote to the local variable, temp ABCD, and the second one is gonna be promoted to temp E. Connect those two up and I'm just connecting it to this other sequence node just to kind of differentiate it and make it easier to understand. So these are the green dots, these are the blue dots. And then we're gonna do our final lerp between the blue dots. So alpha go to time, and it's gonna be D and then E. And that's it. We now have our, our Bezier curve for four points and using this method. So, yay. <laughs> and the rotation is just the same as well. Uh, we just add in another anchor point to our vectors. Anchor start. Anchor end. Anchor end. Sorry if it's a little bit messy, but that was point. That was part of why I suggested we just duplicate the uh, class instead of recreating it from scratch, because you know makes it easier for you to just like duplicate it, be done with it, move on. But this is uh, our current frame, our current Bezier curve rotation spot. And then this is the path, the one on the past, and the one in the future. And then we're just creating a line to it and then normalizing it to get a, a direction. 
and then making the rotation from that direction. Same exact thing. So now drag in get rotation bezier, start point, anchor, anchor, end, time, return value, compile, save, and if I click draw curve, yay, it works. I think I disconnected on the construction script though. Let me double check. I did not, great. So I'll check that. And I can move that up and down, that affects it. Move that up and down. And then I hit play. Look at it go, yeah. It just works. <laughs> Math's fun, isn't it? <laughs> All right, so that's basically it for this uh, part. I know it's pretty short, but it's basically the same sort of method as the simple Bezier, but with another point. And that's all you're accounting for is just you're adding another point to the curves location calculation. So this accounts for three points. This accounts for four points. And then if you want to add another, you just it just keeps adding and adding. So eventually, if you wanted to try and make it dynamic where it's exponential, you can. That's up to you. I did not do that for um, the multipoint where it's just using an array and I n set it up for a specific use case. So I will see you in the next part if you're still watching these videos and if you're still interested. Hopefully this was informative though. So I, I really do hope this was informative to someone and helpful. So have a great day. Bye.